When you look at the devices connected to your computer, you'll generally see things like USB for peripherals, DVI for video, and power cables for, well, power. But what about when you connect computers to other computers, or to devices like CTDs? In order for them to talk to each other, they need a common language or protocol, as well as a system of plugs and pins and wires. That's where serial and ethernet come in. Let's talk about serial first. Serial is the transmission of data one bit at a time over a single wire. In order for you to get data back from the recipient, you would need a second wire for received data. This is called full duplex and is generally what you find in the real world with both sender and receiver communicating back and forth. In order for them to really understand what is going on, you need to let the receiver know when the message starts and stops, which is accomplished by the start and stop bit. You'll also want to add in a parity bit, which checks to see if the bits you are sending got messed up somewhere in the middle of the transmission. So for every 8 bits of information, we would actually be sending 11 bits. Which brings us to baud rate and bit rate. Baud rate is defined as the number of total bits you are sending across the line in bits per second. Bit rate is defined as the number of data bits you are sending in bits per second. So, for our example, if we sent 8 bits of information every second, we would have a baud rate of 11 bits per second, or BPS, and a bit rate of 8 bits per second. Kind of confusing? Well, let's just keep the idea of baud rate in your head for the next few moments. Now when someone asks you to hand them a serial cable, you'll probably give them something that looks like this. Note the 9 pins. The 9 pin plug is also known as a DB9 plug. Each of those pins is connected to a wire within the cable that is then connected to the plug at the other end. But I thought we would only need two wires, one for transmit and one for receive. Well, you need some other pins to handle what I like to think of as the formalities of the communication. These include pins 7 and 8, which provide the request to send and clear to send capabilities collectively known as flow control. Request to send is used to tell the receiver you are ready to send, and clear to send tells the sender you are ready to receive. It's mostly used when you are connecting two systems which are used to being receivers for reasons we are about to explain. See, it used to be that they were computers and modems, which were used as intermediaries for computer-to-computer -computer communication. They would call computers DTEs, or Data Terminal Equipment, and modems DCE, or Data Communication Equipment. Why is this important? Well, because if you're going to connect something to your computer with a serial cable and it isn't a DCE, you aren't going to have the transmit and receive pins set up correctly. DCEs make that communication happen. If you go from DTE to DTE, you aren't going to be able to send and receive data. It used to be that DTEs and DCEs would have male and female plugs respectively, giving you an idea of which one was which. However, with the kind of specialty equipment we use in the survey world, that is not always the case. So what is a DCE and what is a DTE? Well, your acquisition machine is a DTE. Generally, if the box has an operating system like Windows on it, it's a DTE. Something like a Sonar TPU or a CTD, though, might actually be a DCE. The easiest way to tell is to just try the cable and see if it works. Which leads into a discussion of null modem and gender changer adapters. You've probably seen these floating around if you checked out a survey equipment rack. Gender changers just go from male to female plugs. Remember how DTEs and DCEs generally have male and female plugs respectively? Well, gender changers lets you connect two DTEs or two DCEs using a normal cable. You'll still have a problem with the pins though. What you really need to make that work is to swap the receive and transmit lines so that they match up on both ends. That's where null modems come in. Null modems are just another adapter that switch those wires. Pretty simple. Of course, sometimes you'll see situations where null modems and gender changers are needed where you wouldn't expect it, like some special box that uses a special cable or something. Okay, remember when I mentioned protocols? Well, all of the information we just went over comprises the RS-232 protocol, which defines the rules that govern serial communications. So now you have a basic understanding. Let's see how well we did and check out that wiring diagram again. The black lines are our serial cables. You'll see COM1 and COM2, 
which are just names the computer assigns to the different ports on the computer. You'll also see five parameters, such as 9600N81N null. These are the baud rate parity data bits, stop bit, and flow control settings. Remember these? A baud rate of 9600 means you are transmitting 9600 total bits per second, including data bits. A parity of n means you aren't using parity, so you don't need that parity bit. 8 data bits mean you are sending 8 data bits at a time versus 7. This 1 here indicates that you are only using one stop bit instead of two. A flow control of n, or none, just indicates that you aren't using flow control. And finally, the null you see here indicates a null modem, which in this case is for connecting pause and cline, which I believe are both DCEs, or at least act like it. At this point, I should mention that 9600N81 is what you are going to see like 99% of the time. That's because no one uses flow control or parity bits anymore. You can basically do all of that in software these days. So most of the time, you can just try these settings and get it right. Anyway, I hope you got a basic understanding of serial from this module. Next time, we'll talk Ethernet, which will build on some of these concepts and get a little bit more detailed. Thanks for watching, and good luck out there.